In the deep dive video of the first dyno session of the P2-based electric supercharger, we found out that the Vortec SI trim compressor map didn't seem to jive with the data we got. Could it be that the P2 is not as similar to a Vortec SI trim as I thought? So thank you for joining me on this video. It was very gratifying to see how many people actually watched and enjoyed the deep dive video on the first dyno test of the P2-based electric supercharger. I honestly didn't expect that many people to be that interested in it. And because of that, I decided to go ahead and share this research with you as well, because I did do a whole bunch of poking around to find out why in the deep data dive video, the data that we did gather from the ESC and the dyno and the EFI system on the LTD didn't jive with the Vortec SI trim compressor map. I was led to believe that the P2 electric supercharger was very similar to the Vortec SI trim, but the numbers didn't show that. Let's go take a look. On the SI compressor map, let's plot where we were. On the lower boost pole, we saw 2.3 PSI, which happens to be a pressure ratio of 1.16. I go through the math in the other video, you can go back and look at it. But we were also turning just under 25,000 impeller RPM. So let's see where we would have been on here had this compressor map actually applied to the P2 supercharger. So we would be right in the middle of 1.1 and 1.2, just leaning slightly closer to 1.2. And we just keep going across to see where 25,000 RPM would be. Now, you see how if you look at like 40,000 RPM, see how it kind of walks off a cliff and just drops straight down? That's because that's in the choke region of the map. Here, drive power goes through the roof and overall efficiency and everything just basically starts to go down. And that's where we were. But notice also how that fall off is much less as you get to lower and lower pressure ratios. And we were almost as low as you can go and still be on this map. So we were at 1.16 again and just under 25,000 RPM. That would have put us somewhere in this ballpark right here. And that ballpark right there translates to roughly 630 flywheel horsepower. We weren't making 630 flywheel horsepower. Now let's look at it when we made more boost when we switched to the 22 tooth pulley. Then we saw 4.9 PSI of boost at peak power, and that's a 1.3 pressure ratio. And we saw just over 30,000 impeller RPM. So we look at, we take a look at the 1.3 line. This one's easier to see because it's nice and bolded. We go all the way across to the 30,000 RPM line, impeller RPM line, and just go a little bit further to the right of that. And that would put us right around 740 flywheel horsepower. We didn't hit that either. We're about 100 horsepower shy of that. So we calculated just under 650. So obviously these numbers don't line up. Let's go take a look at the impellers and see what the difference was. So obviously something is different. So I decided to pull the parts that I had. The sledgehammer still lives on the LTD. I don't want to take that thing off. That's actually kind of a process. But what I do actually have is pieces parts from other superchargers kicking around. Most notably, I have a Vortec Volute right there. I have a Vortec SC trim impeller right here. And I have a whole nother Speedmaster P2 supercharger right here. So we can compare these things. Now I can tell you that this is the original impeller that we used in the electric supercharger testing. And this is a Vortec SC trim. Now what makes this different than a Vortec S trim is that they milled down the fins. And this was originally released for the modular Cobras, the first Mustangs with the 4.6 liter four cams because those engines really needed RPM. And it was, I guess, cheaper. I'm just spitballing here, but I guess it was cheaper for Vortec to simply mill down the impeller rather than to design a new gear train specifically for that application. But the compressor map was very similar to a Vortec S trim, just moved over a little bit. Now I happen to know that a Vortec SI trim has an inducer diameter of 3.1 inches. The inducer being the inlet side, this, this distance right here, and the exducer would be this distance here. So let's take a caliper and take a look and see what we are actually getting. Let's see, so we are at 2.998 inches. That's pretty close to three inches. And the volute that it fits into would be similar, right around three inches. 
Now we have to back this off a little bit because the little measuring teeth are not exactly deep enough to get to the center of the volute section there where it tapers. But that's 3.0215 inches. That's pretty freaking close to, to three inches. So the inducer on this Vortec SC trim is three inches, and the same would be the case if this was a Vortec S trim. The only difference would be, once again, that the impeller fins would go all the way out to the periphery of the impeller. That's it. But the sledgehammer, once again, has a 3.1 inch inducer size. Now let's take a look at this P2 that I prepared earlier, what its measurements are. I've taken all the screws out so we can just lift it out and flip it upside down. So as you can tell, the difference between these two impellers is very minimal. Again, it's really only the extension out to the extreme edge. This one is all the way and this one is not. In fact, let's prove it by measuring the OD of the impeller. And that's why I went and grabbed my eight inch calipers. So this is 5.75 inches. So basically five and three quarters of an inch. Let's see what we're getting on the P2. Honestly, I did all this research, but this is one measurement I have not taken yet. So we're gonna find out. Oh, wow. It is identical to within a thousandth of an inch. So five and three quarters inches is literally what this impeller measures. So this impeller and this impeller and the Vortec SI trim all have the same exducer diameter. Again, the only difference is the inducer. So what's the inducer size on this guy? So the inducer here is 2.994. It's pretty much exactly the same. And we can confirm that with the volute. Three point oh three oh. That's three point oh three oh. That's that's three inches. So that leads me to conclude that the P two Speedmaster Supercharger is closer to an S trim than an S I trim. In fact, its dimensions are kind of identical. So let's go take a look at that compressor map and see if our data fits on that map any better. And welcome to the S trim compressor map. Now Vortec discontinued the S trim like well over a decade, I don't know when, but it's been at least 10 years, maybe 20 years. So this compressor map, the quality is kind of low, but it's what I could find. Let's plot the P2 supercharger on this map and see if it's any closer. So with the original dyno pulls with a 14 tooth motor pulley and 18 tooth impeller pulley, we again had a pressure ratio of 1.16. That would put us, let's zoom into this bad boy. Love the quality, but that would put us between 1.1 and 1.2 on the pressure ratio graph at just under 25,000 impeller RPM. So we go down the middle of this row here and see where this would be. Now, remember with the SI trim, it actually showed the, the compressor going way into choke. And you remember with these faster impeller speeds, how they were just kind of walking off a cliff. This one kind of signs off earlier because they realize there's really no point in testing it because they know it's gonna walk off a cliff. So we're gonna to have to extrapolate these lines as best as we can here. So anyway, going back to the 1.15 pressure ratio, going all the way across, we could see 25,000 impeller RPM would probably come crashing down somewhere right in here. So that gives us roughly, you know, probably since it doesn't crash quite so hard at this low impeller RPM, I don't know, 560 flywheel horsepower, and we calculated 569. Yeah, that, that's about right. And now let's take a look at the 22 tooth motor pulley setup where we made 4.9 PSI at peak power, which is a pressure ratio of 1.3 to one. And our impeller speed was just shy of 31,000 RPM. So again, we have the advantage of this line being bold and easy to see. So we go all the way across and here's a 30,000 RPM line and it's gonna kind of come crashing down a little bit harder than it was at the 25,000 RPM line. So you could see it'd be right around 650 and we were like 640 something in our uh, brake specific fuel calculation in the deep dive video. That's within, you know, four or five horsepower. That's about right. So that leads me to conclude that the P2 supercharger is almost identical to an S trim.
not an SI trim. So the obvious conclusion is the Speedmaster P2 is much more similar to a Vortec S trim than a Vortec SI trim. Is that really a problem for what we're trying to do? Well, not really, because we're kind of limited to practical limitations of available motors and ESCs and even batteries. But just knowing that it's similar enough to a Vortec S trim where we can plot it on the compressor map makes things like calculating pulley ratios and such that much easier. So this is valuable information for us to have. And once again, thank you all kindly, my people, for joining me on this. And of course, here's your moment of Roger.